Do we do like a vocal warm up before we start? Meh. Uh, Let's see. Good guys, it is the second week of school in the last term of the year and all sorts is going on at the moment. So for today's episode, well, in preparation for today's episode, we put out a question in our Stay Home Insiders group, um, which kind of asked people what the biggest thing on their mind was around this time of year. Mm. And a lot of the stuff that came, essentially like people are worrying about like heaps of different things and yeah. people seem like, like, like it seems like these things that are on people's minds are like taking up like a lot of their yeah. mental capacity. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, like a lot of the kind of feedback and stuff that we got was um, sort of all in a similar vein of anxieties around school um, being the end of the year, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, if we were to kind of like sum it all up. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. We, so we, we thought we'd go through a few of them, and mm. ultimately, I guess the like overarching theme for today is like just kind of relax a little bit you know it's the last yeah. time you don't want to like let go let loose yet but like chill out a bit there's no need too. to like turn the dial back from like nine to like mm. six or seven I reckon. everyone's at like an 11 right now and i yeah. need you at like a four that's yeah. all i'm saying but yeah Awesome, shall we get into some of the things that people ask? Let's get about? into it. Yeah, so one of the first things that um, we had mentioned to us a few times by a few of our um, study time insiders was um, sort of a feeling of a lack of time fitting like all of your exam study into the exam period. Um, and this is definitely, I think, a very fair um, thing to be worried about, particularly for those who um, level one in particular take I remember when I was in level one, I think I had 14 externals, Whoa. like standards, yeah. standards yeah. to do. So like, when you think about that, you're like, well, it's like 14 different units of topics that you have to be like covering, which like is very daunting. Like, and it can feel very overwhelming and yeah. like, with good reason. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, one of our, uh, an article that we'll have out within the next week um, is on how to make a study schedule. So hopefully that will help for um, yeah. anyone who's- I'll check the link for that in the show notes once it comes out, or just keep an eye on studytime.co.nz. Yeah, yeah, and we'll also probably post it up on our Facebook page as well. And Instagram. Oh, if you're not following on Instagram, on, here's a little plug for you. If you're not following study time on Instagram, you're missing out. You should, at studytime.nz, follow cool stuff there. Check us out. Um, yeah. I really want to get to 10,000 follow followers because when you get to 10,000, here's a fun Instagram fact, when you get to 10,000, then you can do the swipe up thing. That's what I'm all about. I want to do the swipe up. Sarah, so at the moment, that. <laughs> at the moment we can't do the swipe up. There was a minimal coffee loss. Just no one look at this. Um, oh, no. You're a mess. At the moment, you can't do the swipe up. Yeah, so we, we want to be able to do the swipe up. And you're I want gonna, to do the swipe up. You're going to clean that boy up? Yeah. Yeah. Just I, I I wasn't going to, but then I saw there's like paper towels like right here, so I thought that's very good. We can clean the coffee. Um, but yeah, so in in making Ow. sure that you're fitting everything into your exam time, it can feel very daunting, and um, just like a few things about the study schedule article, because um, I'm the one who's writing it. Um, <laughs> is, How's that writing going? Oh, at me, but um, like. Part of it is making sure that the way you are studying is effective and it's useful. So I think um, kind of a trap that people fall into is feeling like in the study period or even leading up to the study period that they have to spend, spend X amount of time doing X topic. And this isn't super useful in terms of actually getting things done simply because having time-directed study allows like for the amount of time that you spend like you know wandering around and procrastinating is study when it essentially isn't so like you know you could have started at like 10 o'clock decided you wanted to do four hours of study uh in there you had like a lunch break you had to talk had a quarter all with your mom like it was all good and then you're like oh well, it's two o'clock and i've done my study was that four hours mm -hmm. something like that it was six yeah. hours but it was fine and so you know we, by this like you know, you could have gotten a lot less done than what you thought you would have. So um, definitely try to have like goal directed study. And by this we mean like set yourself goals, like, you know, um, make your set of flashcards that you want to like quickly whiz through every morning for your definitions. Um, you know, um, make that 
cheat sheet, make that summary sheet, make that flow diagram to explain, you know, the electron transfer chain or something like that. Um, like make goals for things that you want to achieve and things you want to do, like practice an exam question because this is going to be much better for our brains because we're going to actually get things accomplished and we're going to have something to show for it and it's going to be like really good. And on top of that as well, it means that we actually are getting things done and the time that we spend kind of like dawdling or procrastinating doesn't count towards it. Yeah, um, I know because at the moment we have uh, we have uni exams in like the last assignments for the uni year are like on at the moment. And yesterday I was trying to I was trying to write an essay, one of the last essays that I have to write for the year, and I was kind of like sitting there. I was kind of just like struggling, and I felt like I wasn't like getting very much done. So. Mm. I guess what I ended up doing was try like breaking it down into like much smaller goals because yep. like, even though we like even though we talk about this stuff all the time sometimes in the moment when you're like trying to do something you kind of forget about it yeah but definitely like taking a step back and like what I did for this essay is like I already knew I already knew what I wanted to write about and how I wanted to approach it and kind of like bulked it off into like 300 word little sections so I can kind of just like look at it pick a section and then just go and just try to do that section yep. and also when you're doing goal directed study like that when you finish there's kind of two things a it's very clear when if your goal is nice and specific it's yep. very clear when you've finished it mm. and then you know if you finish you know three or four of those smaller goals you know you can feel accomplished about that yeah, it's a very definitely. um it's a very it's a very easy metric to measure because you can yeah. be like, I've made three small goals, but also it's not like, you know, in half an hour anything can happen. Yeah. Like it can, you can do lots of work in half an hour, you can mm. like do nothing in half an mm. hour, but like if you did three meaningful like things towards your assignment or towards your exams, that's like three meaningful things, like yeah. it's kind of like a more objective metric. Yeah, definitely. So like, in... And feeling like you do have a lack of time for your study period, I would also, I feel like I'm just like spitting out everything that I wrote for this article, but... Um, all the secrets, you heard them here first. All, yeah, exclusive. But um, another thing is mapping out when your exams are and incorporating that into a study schedule or bearing that in mind when you are um, thinking about the way you want to study. Because if you have like... Uh, off the top of my head, I don't have the NCQA uh, exam timetable memorized, so forgive me if this isn't in the right order. But you know, if you have English in the first week on Wednesday, um, but you thought, you know, I want to study holistically for everything along the way, and you realize like it's the day before your English exam, but your study schedule says you have to like look at bio, like you're not going to do bio. Like it's think about when your exams are and how much time you have between exams. So like, I remember when I was in year 13, my exams were spaced about a week apart from each other, I think. That's real good. And yeah. so what I ended up doing, and unfortunately, you know, it doesn't work like this for everyone, but like, I would focus on that one topic for a week. And then as soon as that was done, I would just move on to the next one like that. And you know, that can definitely work for you if your study schedule, or if your exam timetable, sorry, allows for it. And like, obviously I understand that that's not gonna be like that all the time, but just, be aware of when that kind of thing is because what you're going to do is have like a tailored schedule and you know if if one of your very very last exams is like right on the last day and you've got like two weeks between them like I would personally not touch it until everything like else was done like and then I just have it yeah for like a week and then only study in like the week directly before yeah like maybe yeah. yeah because if, if, you if only, you've had like heaps of exams before that yeah like, yeah. yeah so like bear that in mind and I think quite often as well a lot of students fall into this idea of thinking that they have to know everything by the end of the study week before mm. they move into exams and like bear in mind you know that whole study period you've got like I don't know like a month or so of exams so in that time, or maybe even longer than a month. No, not longer than a month. Not longer than a month? I think of the exam period itself is not going to be longer than a month. That is very true. Study Sorry, actually, combined with exams, if depending on your exams and the school, might be like a year longer than a month. But true. Not really. Yeah. yeah no, that's, that's a very that's detailed right. explanation. No, I think that's, that's right. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. So like, bear, bear that in mind as well. Um, and... I think everyone feels at this time of year that they don't have enough time. Mm. And 
everyone always manages to make it through at the end. And I think that I right that's... I now feel like I don't have enough time. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> like, at, at this point, like, I just feel like there's not enough hours in the day to do everything like, yeah, that yeah. I have, like, committed myself to do. And I guess it's, yeah, it's very daunting because, like, I, I know I've committed to, you know, like, making so many videos at work over the next month. And yeah. Do, like, like, finishing up, like, the uni, my two assignments and exam for the year. And, like, like I can see like all of this has to be done in like three weeks time yeah and that can seem very daunting because like it's a lot of stuff and like mm. three weeks isn't that long a time but mm. when you kind of when you kind of break it down and just take it on a day-by-day -day basis it, like you kind of slowly work away at it yeah like if you imagine it as like a progress bar of a hundred like you only have to make like if it's a month you only have to make like three percent progress like every day yeah 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 so Try try not to think. Don't, try not to fall too hard into this idea that you're not going to have enough time because everyone, at the end of the day, always does. Like mm. we always manage to do it somehow. Yeah. And I think we'll probably always get to the end of it and think, oh, we could have done this better, or oh, I wish I'd done this. But there is no point in uh, like brooding on it, ruminating on it. There is no point in like beating yourself up about it you can only think oh this is maybe what i would do better next time or you know just just don't stress too much about it and i know that that's a very empty thing to say like yeah, i but. guess i um one thing i'd say is like imagine i don't know one thing that i find is sometimes now i'm helpful dropping the coffee can is, i have the <laughs> sorry one thing that i find is sometimes helpful is imagine like the realistic worst case scenario like and it's not going to be as bad it's it's never as bad as because when you don't sometimes like i don't know when you don't think about what the realistic worst case scenario is sometimes it can seem like a much like the potential is much bigger than it is yeah but realistically i don't know let's say like the CSA i have next week if i um like worst case scenario like it gets to monday and like I haven't done it. Mm. I know that I'm capable of finishing it on a Monday. It won't, the grade won't be as good. Yeah. But like, I'd get it done. Like, I know that it could be done. So that's like the worst case scenario for that. Yeah. For your, like, your bio exam, like the worst case scenario might be that yeah, you might not get excellence, but like if you put in like some effort and mm. like the three days before, you might have a, you might have like a really good chance of passing. Like yeah. the worst case scenario is never as bad as it seems. Yeah, I think like, you're not going to die if you fail your exam. To like, make to make like an anecdote of it. Um, oh, I just knocked my very sorry team. But um, yeah, to make to make an an anecdote of it. Mm. Uh, when I was in year thirteen, I was five credits off my excellence endorsement. Um, going into exams and. I spilled coffee on my phone. Oh sadness. That's right. Um, and like I was very like I could do it, but I had notoriously I. Speaking, of, so I was someone that got excellence at level one and two, and in an external, I have never once gotten an excellence in any external ever. So I don't know, take from that what you will. But um, I was five credits off my excellence endorsement at level three, and as frustrating as that is, it's, it's so, so annoying. But like looking back on it now, I'm just like, oh, it really like doesn't matter that much. Like it, it was annoying, but at the end of the day it yeah. didn't affect anything else long term like, and I think at, sometimes we can get really wound up mm. in that idea that it is going to dictate a lot more than it actually does those like those worst case scenarios really don't have um, that the detrimental effect that I think we predict it will yeah I mean if you look at look at like some look at a failure from like three years ago like how much do you actually care about that now mm. and like if like say like something bad something went wrong within like the next few weeks over the exam period and like another three years you'd probably view it the same way as that mm. like these things fade with time and they're really as important as like they can feel to be at the time yeah um yeah i think like my nca level three results haunt me less than that one time i was at mcdonald's and i told the chick who was serving me to enjoy her meal as well <laughs> Yeah, I've that done, haunts me I've because all my friends things. saw it, and I'm just very socially awkward. But yeah, just it's it's not as big as you think it's going to be. Take it a day at a time. Do what you can. Make yourself mini goals. Um, deconstruct things as much as possible so it does feel manageable. 
And if you want to put yourself in the right mindset for the exam period, you should watch last week's episode or listen to it. Listen to it on like, yeah. 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 Um, actually as well, like just as another aside, kind of cheeky plug, because another sort of thing that we got within the study time inside us was people saying they weren't 100% sure how to study and the way to mm. do it. And so we kind of did discuss that goal directed. Um, and a lot of the time as well, because the standards that NCQA provides for, um, are sometimes vague at best. And um, on the study time website, we do have some checklists and stuff uh, with our walkthrough guides that do have, like they do tell you everything that is in a standard. Yeah. And so if you are like having trouble um, knowing like where to start where to or how start, to organize to it, like that is definitely like super, super helpful. Yeah, um, studytime.co.nz slash guides, you can find the checklist at that same link as well. Yeah. Also, next week, we are releasing a uh, like short online course, free online course on how to study, as in like, so the guides cover like the content, like what you actually yep. need to know for the exam. But this course, it's with Jordan and Lily. Um, it explains like how the best approach, like the best approach to actually studying, like when you mm. sit down at a desk, like what should you actually do when you walk into an exam? What should you actually do? Yeah. Um, it's really good. It will be out next week, hopefully. It's like cool. ready to go. But just putting the website together, putting some finishing touches on. Just a little bit of but seasoning. Yeah, that's real good. Um, another thing kind of in the same vein with the study period and just studying in itself is um, people discussing grades and responses to grades. Um, we're kind of like discussing mocks right now, I think. Um, and mm. this is both personal and like external. Um, so, and not allowing them to dictate your mood too much or your approach to coming into exams. Um, I definitely think mocks are an indicator of where you are, were currently at when you set it, not an indication of what you would get in your externals. Yeah. And I think that is something to so bear in mind is... Especially now, because for a lot of people at this point, mocks were like a month ago, two yeah. months ago, some cases even more. Yeah. Um, you, can f you can learn so much more in that time. And I think even right now, if a lot of you... Can learn an entire like, s subject in like a month. Yeah. Yeah. Genuinely. And I think, honestly, even if like anyone right now were to look at some of their mock questions that they had and they had to like retry it, they would probably do better than they did mm -hmm. last time. Not because they know the answers to it, but uh, like it's, we're always going to be developing. And I think mocks are, mocks should be viewed as a marker and like a milestone, not an end result. Yeah, um, definitely. And yeah, I think that that's, probably like one of the most important things to bear in mind and getting a sucky mock result does like it's not awesome like it's and you know I'm not here to take that away from anyone you know you're allowed to wallow for like a little bit like you're allowed to be like wow I hate this oh, yeah. and my teacher probably actually just does oh, hate yeah. me and like it you know it had nothing to do with oh, me yeah. playing like Fortnite till 4am but like is Fortnite still as relevant? popular as it used to nah, be? Nah Fortnite ruined itself it tried putting in too many like mods and stuff like that and I was like all oh, janky <sighs> Um, Sad. This I, think, phone, I think PUBG is still going strong. This phone, here's a really on topic fun fact. This phone is like, like when Fortnite came out on Android, it was exclusive to like this phone and like the S9. Um, Samsung cut some deal with Epic Games. Yeah, Epic Games, the developer of Fortnite. Um, also, another off topic thing, you're drinking coffee this morning. Great to see, great beverage. I just need to make myself Coffee's an excellent either. beverage. Um, I don't want it black as my soul. Yeah, black coffee is the best. That's how I live my life. Yeah, I, I don't drink like milky drinks that often. I'll have like a splash oh. of like oat milk in my um, like English breakfast tea. But even that, I'll drink black if I need to. The, my, the, the only milky drink I like is like milkshakes, which is like the, the ultimate milky drink. Yeah. There's a new there's a new place. There's like a new like dessert bar that opened up like not too far from here. They do some cool milkshakes. I want to go. Do they do yeah. like dairy free milkshakes? I don't know. They might. It's surely it's, it's Wellington. Wellington yeah. Surely, <laughs> surely we go there at some point. Yeah. I'll be do kidding. a wholesome half hour there. Should we do a wholesome half hour? At, at actually, mukbang. <laughs> it's still mukbang. No, Tell us that fast. you want us to do a mic bang, please. Please do not do I wanna, that. I want to be able to eat noodle canteen while please. talking to you guys about how you should study. No. Mic bang. Declined. Petition for mic bang 2018. I'm handing in my resignation. Oh. <laughs> okay, anyway, great. So um, I think genuinely, yeah, like, you're allowed to be upset if you're not pleased with your grade. 
but also you do have to pick your uh, what's the I guess like there's only so much you can like I was trying to think of a no, word that would fit in that phrase that wasn't a cuss. Uh, you, you, there's just, uh, I don't know, all I'd say is like, there's just no point, like there's, you have nothing to gain by dwelling on like yep. the same thing again yep. and again. You have much more to gain by yep. reacting to it in a certain way. So I'd decide, you know, yep. here's my grade, this is what I want to do and I'd just do that. Just by dwelling on the same thing, like there's just, yeah, there's, yeah. there's nothing to like, gain. By at some point you have to put on your big boy pants or your big girl pants and decide, you know, am I going to learn from this or am I just going to blame it on other external sources? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you just have to make sure that what you're doing is going to be constructive and it's going to be productive and it's going to mean that you are going to do better later on and you're not going to fall into the same mistakes that you did the first time. Because at the end of the day, if you make a mistake, um, and, and, and this isn't anything, we're going to like low-key DNM, but like, if you make a mistake and you don't try to fix it or you don't try to learn from it, you're going to be bound to make it again. And you're probably kind of do it over and over again. You're kind of just going to look stupid. Yeah. Like, I, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Come on. Yeah. I won't use the language that he uses, but there's like a Gary Vee quote that is like, all this looking back is mucking with your neck. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, like, you, Mucking was just, definitely just the like, word he yeah, used. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but like, by looking back, you are just like like causing pain for yourself, and yeah. you're literally gaining nothing from it yeah. so, by just like doing it again and again. Yeah. And it's a very easy thing to do. Yeah. But definitely, like, it's just a very defeatist to, attitude to have. Mm, like, just like react and move on. Yeah. Um, just <sighs> yeah, like just engage with it, and rather like if you are feeling really really down about it think, well, what can I actually do about it so I don't feel like this anymore, you know? Another one is people mentioned that teachers potentially weren't too pleased about students' mocks results. Yeah. Um, but I, I, okay, so if one student, like, cocks it up, am I allowed to say that? Yeah. All right. If one student cocks it I up. Don't know, but sure, I'm not going to, I can't. Will said worse that. before, so. Yeah, that's true. Like, Okay, it might have been the student second study. If the whole class got the same thing wrong. I'm not pointing no fingers, but. Like, I think, like, teachers at the end of the day, like, they're there to provide you with as much as they can. Um, quite often with mocks as well, they, especially for those who took it in term three, um, quite often they didn't get to fully teach an external. I know that I fully went into a lot of my mocks with um, like the last little bits of a standard not fully done because we didn't quite have enough time yet. Mm. And that's fine um, because, you know, you will learn it for your actual um, yeah. grade. I mean, just like, just realize, like see it for what it is. Yeah, see, yeah. see it for what it is. Be real. I think as well, um, it's very easy when you get results back to be like, oh, it was my teacher's fault. Mm. Make, I mean, sometimes it could be. I'm not, I'm not discounting that that is a possibility. But what I'm also saying is don't be too quick to blame others for it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if teachers are a little bit upset about either your results or a whole class's results, like, that's their own deal. That shouldn't affect you. Um, that's something that they got to work through. Absolutely. Where they got to see someone. they got to get it together. I don't care where. I don't care how. they got to get it together. Get it out of here. Because it doesn't... Uh, the coffee's hitting. But... <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's just, it is a case of, e even parents, like if parents aren't pleased with your mock results as well, same thing goes, you might have to have a constructive conversation with them because they do feed you and clothe you and let you live at their pad, but like, you can only say, you know, you did your best or you're planning, you have a plan for making it better or something like that, but try not to let, and again, I know this is a very empty statement, but try not to let it get you down too much because... Yeah. You're the only. You're the one who goes into the exam at the end of the day. You're the one that is going to contribute to your results, and yeah, it's it's up. It's, it's just up your you. thing. Like it's take ownership over it. Yeah, and, like, yeah. Don't let too many other people have like an effect, especially yeah. on the on mindset surrounding it. There's yeah, nothing. I think I think that's it genuinely like um, I'll say it on the recording. So pitch it is like another episode of the wholesome half hour might be actually like we could just discuss. 
um, how to deal with parents or teachers and stuff and deal with those external pressures coming yep. around to exams. If you guys do want to see that, like, let us let know. Let us know. Leave a um, comment. Leave a comment, yeah, let us know because that stuff that, like, I know I've had to help students with in the past, so it's definitely something that I would be, like, keen to talk about because I know a lot of students do struggle with it. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we had a couple of, like, miscellaneous um, things that people were worried about. Uh, so one of them was like making like whether they've made the right uni choice for next year. Obviously, the time to depart to the university is mm. getting nearer for year thirteens now. And I guess I'd say a couple. University of is great. Sorry, continue. It's lots of fun, kids. It's yeah. so good. I definitely wasn't at uni until like eleven o'clock the other night. Um, I guess two things I'd say. So I guess. In relation to actual like university of choice and like what you're studying, in regard to like actual university of choice, you're probably gonna be fine wherever you go. Yeah, I don't worry about that too I, much. Like, honestly, like if if you're taking one of those big courses like med, you do uni, oh, you do Auckland, Otago, law, you'll probably come to Vic. A lot of the other stuff, pick whatever city you like. Yeah, like you, yeah, you, you, if you. Essentially, like you, it's very hard to make a wrong decision. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of courses, I guess like just I, I feel like when you're in high school, like it can feel like when you're like when you sign up for uni in first year, you're committing for three years. That's what you're going to study. You can't yeah. change it. You're going to like end up at uni for twenty years if you do try to change it. Mm. And that's usually not the case. Um, like Most I, you'll have to do like another year. Yeah, or like even like, I don't know, I changed one of my majors when I was first year and it mm. added like no time to my degree. Yeah. Um, especially if you're doing like a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor yeah. of Science, um, yeah. it's pretty flexible. You're not yeah. going to, you're not, you're unlikely to be like mm. caught out in a situation where like you have to throw a year away. It's, yeah. yeah. I think, I think for a lot of, like there's something isn't something that I think is um, portrayed super well to those um, you know thinking about going to university or those who've signed up for university is the ease at which you can change mm. and also the frequency of it. Most people change at their degree once or twice in those three years. Like genuinely, more people than not that I know have changed it. I was fortunate enough to like have an idea in my head of what I would like, went to uni and I was like, this is sick, I actually do really mm. enjoy it. Most, a lot of people don't. Like I've had so many people, who, I've known so many people who have gone to university, thought that one, like a course would be one thing, turned it out, it was another, decided they didn't want to do it anymore. And that is absolutely perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong in doing that. I can literally go on to like my computer right now and change my major if I really, yeah. really wanted to. Yeah. Like it's not that big a deal. Yeah, the ease, the ease at which you can change. So just for like in detail, um, in the first two weeks of the trimester or semester or whatever, um, yeah. there's two, most unis have two semesters in the year. So in the first two weeks, you can literally like log on online and change mm. into a different course. Like you don't need to talk to anyone. You just like click some buttons and it's done. It's really easy. Yeah. It takes like no effort. It. Yeah, um, I've done it like numerous times over the years. I think, yeah, like, like it, it's it's that like it's literally as simple as so like logging easy. on, deciding what course you want to do, and like in some numbers. I think that's also why in first year it's kind of good to take a few different subjects in a few different areas that you like. Um, take some papers that you think might interest you. Mm. Everyone dabbles in philosophy in first year. I did. Uh, here I am, but like. You know, take a few different things that you like because you will find something that you enjoy. And if you decide that you want to base a major off, you know, like this one paper that you did that you just like really, really loved, it, like that's so fun. Like I have a really good friend who he was studying biomed, and within biomed, um, you had there was a requirement for a psych one two two course, um, which is a lot of brain anatomy type stuff, kind of introduction, and. He like aced that course, did so well in it, absolutely loved it, despised biomed, and now he does psych. And he really, really enjoys it. And like, it's so okay. And I think overall it added like another half, uh, a half a year to his course. But like in the greater scheme of things, it really doesn't mean a lot. Like you're doing a conjoint, which is four years anyway. Yeah. Like, so the bachelor's is like, you know, three and a half years. And also bear in mind, we've got that lovely Cindy money. Thank you, Cindy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Love you guys you. get free money. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not better, but it's fine. Um, Rip national. I don't know if that was low-key national propaganda or not. 
it's definitely, I, I think it's hard to spin some like positive national propaganda at the moment. It's pretty challenging, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the right. so Anyway. Simon. All right, Love you, Jadab. Love you, Jadab. Get Sarah's there. like, sponsor me. <laughs> at me too. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, so I think. I'm pretty sure she blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> like three years ago long story. that's very fun but genuinely it's one of those things that going into university it's this case of just not knowing yeah and i think that's what's the most daunting thing about it so take it from some people who have been at uni for like three years now as really not that much of a like to make a real funny like a joke of it genuinely one of one of my flatmates at the beginning of this year she took a course that she thought would like be really really good sat in the lecture for the very first day and the lecturer was like, yeah, so there's a group presentation. And during her very first lecture, she dropped that paper. Yeah, so You can do it just like I, that and pick I, up another one. When, it's just a joke at this point. When I started, um, when I started my commerce major was information systems. And I got to second trimester, first lecture. I was, or maybe it was first, maybe it was second year, first lecture. And like, I'm like... This is like this is not for me. I, I'm not into this. And literally, like in the class on my laptop, removed the course, and then it was a two-hour lecture. And like 50 minutes in, I just like left. Yeah. And I changed to marketing, and I've never looked back. It's it's one of those things that I think, like when you're an intermediate going into high school, you're like, I don't know what high school is going to be like. It's going to be really yeah, scary. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know what it's yeah, going to yeah. be like. And then you get into year 13, you walk into your media studies class, and you're like, killed it, Tom. Yeah. Shout out my media studies teacher. He was absolutely like. Something sure. But like, you know, like it was, it gets to the point where like you're in year 13, you're comfortable in the atmosphere and it's like, it's always far more chill than you think mm. it's going to be. Yeah. Like always way more chill. So I hope that this provided some support for more people. Um, if people want us to discuss more about uni, like we're obviously more than happy to make absolute jokes about degrees because it is a joke anyway, mine at least. Fine. Should we move on? Yeah. Okay, cool. So our next one is more for those who are in year 12. And so we had a few people mention that they're applying for like prefect and head roles and stuff like that. Gotta I can't that comment. because Gotta get that badge. I wasn't a prefect or a head person as you guys can probably tell. But um, yeah, like were you at all? Can no, I wasn't. I, have, I don't know. I have, <laughs> I'm not an ambitious person. One of person. my close friends was like the head boy at our school. Yeah. And it is now involved in student politics and I legitimately think might be the Prime Minister of New Zealand in like another 20 years. He's a very good boy. Yeah. He's anyway, boy. Um, I guess like I'm lying for previous, I, I don't know, I'd just be like, so I guess one thing is if you're in year 12, there's not much like, you're kind of like, not status isn't the right word, but like the contribution you've made to the school, like if you want to be a prefect next year, like you've already like made it at this point. Mm. like. There's not much you can do to change that position. So I guess yeah. if you're like applying now, I guess like definitely like play to your strengths. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is. I don't know, I feel like with the prefect roles, like obviously you like if you need, if like there's an application process in your school, like you have to apply, like you have mm. to be in to win. But outside of that, like I don't know, I feel like if you're the right fit for the role, like you'll get it. Yeah. And if you if you don't get it. I wouldn't worry too much about it. By the time yeah. you get to university, no one, no one cares. No one cares. No one, no cares. one cares. Actually, no if you go cares. around at uni, say you're a prefect, people will probably like you less. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it, it, like, I mean, I understand wanting to oh, be a prefect. Oh, absolutely. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great achievement. Wanting to be head girl, wanting to be head boy. Yeah, it's, it's definitely cool. Like, you got that, like, high school clout. Like, that's neat. Yeah. Like, sorry, that sounds very sarcastic. I'm sorry, that's just my voice. No, no, it's, but, yeah, it's generally, like, a really good thing to do. Like, I was... But it's not, like, it's not a life and death thing. Yeah. yeah, I think, again, to make a joke out of my life, um, one of, so, in my group of friends... Most of them were prefects, uh, head boy, head girl, deputy head boy, deputy head girl, were all within my friend group. I was probably like the, one of the only ones in my group that wasn't like of status within the student body. And I was okay with that because like I'm a pretty low key person at our high school. I was a pretty low key person, which is very funny now because I'm like a presenter for like a high school study website. I always think that's very funny. If any of my teachers ever see me on any of these, shout out. That's very fun. But like, I think if you get it, like, well done. That's amazing. And like, like genuinely, like, that is like a really like cool thing. And I don't want to take away from that at all. Um, but 
within that I do also want to say that if you don't, don't get too shaded about it. I think like at the yeah. end of the day, it doesn't make a huge difference. Like I, again, I wasn't any of those kind of things. I like, I am purely just an academic. I am a noodle in both mind, body and soul. Um, I'm not sporty, I'm not musically talented. But like, you know, I still got into the hall I wanted. I'm still in the course that I wanted. Like, you know, everything is like worked out for me and not being a prefect and not being a head boy or head girl. Yeah, it hasn't played into it. Has, it, it, has it, it like, again, it's like, you know, NCA results. Like looking back on it, I'm just like, yeah, like it doesn't mean as much as you think it does. Yeah. Like um, for me, my level, my level three went like really badly. Like I, j I just scraped into UE, but like now, like I don't know. I'm very happy with the grades I get at uni. Mm. I have like this amazing job here. Um, like everything, like like it hasn't it hasn't had any like rollover effect yeah. that I can count on. Like everything yeah. else that I would like everything that I wanted to achieve post school, like I managed to achieve. Yeah, anyway. I think it, at the time, like it is like really cool. Like and it does make year thirteen fun because you can leave class and just say the principal wants to hang out with you even though he doesn't. <laughs> Um, which is definitely what people do um, but like I think you know it's I think it is like for that year that you are in that role it is like fun and it is cool and you do get like some perks and stuff with it and you know you get to like I don't know like stand in front of the as assembly and like maybe talk to people every now and then do the nod the old nod is that a thing at other schools probably not at Wellington College the prefect at the beginning of assembly nods and then the school stands up and the, not the principal, the headmaster walks in. Supposedly it's a bit more liberal now, but it wasn't three years ago. It's very propaganda-y. Oh, actually, no. One of my old <laughs> friends, um, at her school, sure you, the right. youngest person in year nine at the beginning of every year had to wash the principal's feet. That's very weird. It's very weird. I don't know. Uh, it's very culty. It's very culty. Um, Anyone from that school knows what's up, but that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so genuinely, like, I think it's not the end of the world. Um, but applying for those roles can be a little bit of extra stress around these times, especially if you have to prepare speeches or stuff like that. And I would maybe just think, um, you know, ask your friends, like, oh, what are my strengths? What do you think that I could, like, you know, if you have to write for an application or say something in an application, um, you know, and I'm not 100% sure how the process goes in a lot of different schools, but in mine at least, um, those who were applying just had to give a speech to year 13s only. And generally at, the, at year 13, you know a lot of these people, they are your mm. peers. So it's like less daunting, I think, because you've got your mates in the crowd that are just like, you like I'll laugh at whatever you say, even if yeah. it's like like not good chat. Um, but yeah, so I think- It just got really sunny. It did. And now it's gonna get I realise I know why I look very pink, and it's because of this white background. Oh, uh, yeah, we can fix that. I'm translucent. Can you see my veins? You actually can. That's very fun. I'm see-through. <laughs> That's, That's how pale I am. Cool. Shall we get to our last one? Last one, because I think we're extended we're this out. Like thirty-six minutes. Okay, all yeah. as well. Okay, so our last one is. Um, again, a lot for year thirteens, but just other stuff as well. Or other years as well. Sorry, is um, enjoying the last few days, especially mm. for those in year 13. Um, it can be a little bit of a melancholic experience. I had a lot of friends who cried on the last day. Um, I yeeted out of there, but that's fine. <laughs> I, I have the emotional it's capacity like of a teaspoon it, though. It, it's so. definitely like, an, I don't know, it's definitely an emotional experience. Um, I don't know, for me when I left school, like, well, as long as you're in school, like, you have like a, like socially mandated or like a societally mandated thing you have to do with your life. Yeah. And after like school, like that doesn't exist. And yeah. like, I don't know, leaving, is, I don't know, especially when you think of it like yeah, that, that was cool. leaving it is kind of weird. But I like, think, I, I, I definitely I'm... like enjoy it. I realise that like, this is like legitimately some of the last, this is legitimately the last time you'll see like some of these people. And for a lot of the time, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> um, and I don't know, I, I just say like my it. like high school experience <laughs> the entire. I was so apathetic and just about the whole thing. I think yeah, like definitely enjoy it, but and I think it can be scary moving on mm. to um, working or you know couch surfing for a year because everyone kind of does dabble in that, um, or you know going straight into uni. Um, I think it's. 
a bittersweet sort of like experience where you're sort of leaving a lot of security and a lot of safety. Mm, yeah. Um, but, and I know it's hard to feel like it at the time, but you will not miss it. Uh, people say high school are the best years of your life and they lied. Like, and I had a maths teacher say this to us one day. He was like, he was a very funny man. But he said to us, he's like, people always say high school is the best year of your lives. And he was like, I had the best years of my life in university and the time just after university, if you don't decide to go to that, which is also absolutely fine. Um, those are the best years of your life because you're old enough to do all the fun things, but not too old to have too many responsibilities. Yeah. It's a very fun time. Um, it's filled with a lot of existential dread, but we'll push that to the side for now. Um, you know, it, it, it is scary, but ultimately it is very, very good. It's very fun. And I think as well, people um, around this time of year, just as kind of like our last point, I just kind of want to whiz through and I realise I've kind of talked for most of this episode yeah, and that's absolutely that's fine. That's right. um, People also mentioning like friends around this time of year. Mm, yeah. Uh, you, you, you I don't know. You talk about... You start off the point there, I'll wrap it up. I don't really, okay. I don't really have like an intro thing. To I'm gonna, say I'm gonna start it, and Sarah's gonna make it wholesome at the end because this probably isn't gonna be a wholesome chat. <laughs> nah, it will be. Um, so people just mentioning stuff with friends around this time of year, which you know obviously adds to stress. Um, it's very interesting when you leave high school because you realise that a lot of the people that you spent your high school years with, you're only friends with them because you were legally obliged to spend six hours a day in an institution that they also had to attend, yeah. um, which is a very glorified way to put You both had to be at school. Yeah. Um, and the friends who you're really close with are the people that you will remain in contact with, regardless of whether you're in different parts of the country. Some yeah. of my like very good friends from high school like are in Dunners and stuff like that. And I still talk to them and they're still like really, really good friends. And the people who you want to make an effort for or the people that you are really close with, you will remain in contact with. Um, and I think as well, it can be very easy to get sucked into a lot of stuff like dramas and that kind of thing. And I think sometimes you do just need to take a step back and think, does this really matter? And if something is really giving you like a lot of stress around this time of year, that is also very stressful. You know, you've got exams, um, you know, if you're going to uni, you've got to handle all that, you know, um, even just NCA in general, like take a step back and think, does it really matter? Mm. And take the steps that you think will resolve it the quickest because I think dragging things out also stresses things even yeah. more. I definitely like, like uh, just make the most of the last days of school. Like just like literally like whatever's on your mind that you want to do, like just do, do whatever. it. Because like, you don't have to see these like, people if you, you don't, don't want to, to again. Like if you don't want, like, like definitely like some of my closest friends from high school like I still like uh, don't live here but I still talk to them all the time yeah um and yeah I definitely wouldn't worry about that but yeah I, I just say make the most of the last times at high yeah. school and like don't worry about like if there is some drama with people like you don't actually care about that much like I wouldn't I just wouldn't worry about it that like, much it's like it doesn't matter it's not worth it it yeah. really really isn't um yeah I, I wish that I could spin a wholesome yarn on that but like I I don't think I, my body could produce that. I was sort of relying on Siren for that. Um, All good. Shall we wrap up here? I think 43 we're minutes. 43 minutes. 43 minutes and 20 minutes late to a meeting. Sick. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions for next week, let us know. Comments below. Yep. Guides, studytime.co.nz slash guides. Or if you want to buy them in print, studytime.co.nz at the store. And we'll put the article on Lots making of, a study yeah. schedule on once it has been released. Lots of cool stuff coming out in the next few weeks. Keep an eye on website, Instagram is like the best place, and then as well, like Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. We're on Twitter. Yeah, we're on Twitter. Kind of. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. The boss started it, but then I don't know, it's not very active these days. Right. We're on Twitter. Twitter for politics only. Very fun. Donald Trump. We'll be controversial over on Twitter, shall we? Yeah, maybe we'll start like replying to Donald Trump's tweets. We'll just add Donald Trump until he blocks us. That'd be very fun. I think it's Donald J. Trump. I think Donald, yeah. The old Trump lump. Yeah, Trump lump. The old okay. Don Tron. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.